आज हम एक बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिकेटर के बारे में बात करेंगे जिसे हम कहते हैं ग्रॉस डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट या जीडीपी या सिंपल टर्म्स में सिर्फ ग्रोथ ऑफ द इकोनॉमी ये एक ऐसा इंडिकेटर है जिसे हम सब ट्रैक करते हैं बी एट इन्वेस्टर्स इकोनॉमिस्ट बैंक कॉमन मैन और बी एट या मल्टी नेचुरल एजेंसी सिंपली पुट आई थिंक ऑल द इकोनॉमिक एनालिसिस वी डू एंड मॉडल वी क्रिएट एंड हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी डेटा वी ट्रैक उन सब का गोल होता है जीडीपी ग्रोथ को प्रोजेक्ट करना और उसे समझ पाना सिंपल टर्म्स में जीडीपी क्या होता है लेट्स से इंडिया एज एन इकोनॉमी ने हंड्रेड रुपीज का आउटपुट यू नो प्रोड्यूस किया एक साल में और नेक्स्ट ईयर हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स ये आउटपुट हो गया तो हम बोलेंगे कि ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ द इकोनॉमी सिक्स परसेंट है बट इसकी मेथडोलॉजी इसके कैलकुलेट करने के तरीके थोड़े नुआंस है और आज हम उन तरीकों को डिस्कस करेंगे ओके तो नंबर वन जी डी पी जो है एक एक्सपेंडिचर मेथड से कैलकुलेट की जाती है जिसका मतलब है कि टोटल आउटपुट या टोटल यू नो प्रोडक्शन ऑफ इंडिया इकोनॉमी इज इज सम ऑफ फोर थिंग्स कंजम्पन विच इज योर प्राइवेट कंजम्पन सेकेंडली गवर्नमेंट कंजम्पन इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड नेट एक्सपोर्ट For those of us who had some classroom understanding of economics, एक equation पढ़ाते थे कि uh, output is equals to c plus g plus i plus x, right? So let's see what uh, c is. C is private consumption. It is what you and I spend. So आपके you know weekend के hotel bills, आपका travel, tourism, uh, आपका you know restaurant, dining, the chocolate you purchase. Uh, the food that you eat, everything falls under the private consumption of the economy. This is the C bit of the economy and contributes about fifty-eight percent to the total GDP. The second bit is G, which is the government consumption, which is what the central and the state governments and the municipalities combined uh, spend. So, uh, you know, revenue expenditure, जो भी वेजेस एंड पेंशन में सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के अकाउंट से जा रहा है यू नो सिंपल एग्जांपल इफ यू गो टू अ गवर्नमेंट ऑफिस एंड देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ टी सप्लाई दैट टी आल्सो फॉर्म्स पार्ट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट कंजम्पन पर से द थर्ड पार्ट आई इज योर इन्वेस्टमेंट टेक्निकली ये ग्रॉस फिक्स कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन होता है जी विच मीन एसेंशली इंडिया में कितने रोड्स बने कितना रेलवे डेवलपमेंट हुआ प्राइवेट सेक्टर में कितने रियल एस्टेट प्रोजेक्ट्स कंस्ट्रक्ट हुए ये सब आई का पार्ट बनता है सो ऑल दीज नंबर सी प्लस जी प्लस आई आर पॉजिटिव नंबर्स दैट मींस दे ऐड टू इंडिया आउटपुट देर इज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट कॉल एक्स विच इज नेट एक्सपोर्ट विच इज इंडिया एक्सपोर्ट माइनस इम्पोर्ट नाउ एज वी स्टैंड टूडे India's exports are lesser than India's imports. That means we import more and we export less, and therefore this component comes as a negative entry in India's GDP. So C plus G plus I, all positive, and it's like minus X because this itself is a negative number. Takes about three percent of GDP away from India. Uh, is your total growth equation okay? Once you have this equation, you try to measure output on year-on-year -year changes, quarter-on-quarter -quarter changes to derive conclusion. Now, before I move further, I think there is a very important concept uh, which is in parallel to GDP is GVA, which means gross value added. Now, gross value or added um, is the total output minus the price of the intermediate product. So, essentially. uh if we were to think from the market term uh, you know the total top line of the companies is similar to gdp and uh, jo ebitda wala component hota hai wo gva ke similar hota hai jo gva ka data hai wo hame by economic activity milta hai which means hame agriculture industry industry mein bhi mining manufacturing construction ka break up milta hai then services सर्विसेज में अगेन हमें पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन टूरिज्म ट्रैवल इन सब का कंपोनेंट मिलता है तो जीवीए का डेटा बाय सेक्टर आता है इट हेल्प्स टू स्टडी 
you know which part of the economy by the economic activity is doing well and three major sectors that come out are agriculture uh, and allied activities industry and services uh now that we know ki gdp kya hai and gva kya hai we know ki kaise uh, you know conclusions hame derive karne hain uh lekin ek aur concept jo hum aksar sunte hain is about real gdp versus nominal gdp so you know when people say ki india ka gdp projection kya hai the first question is real or nominal right so what is the difference okay uh usually ek base year define hota hai okay uh let's say अभी जो हम जी डी पी सीरीज देख रहे हैं उसका बेस ये टू थाउजेंड इलेवन ट्वेल्व डिफाइंड है प्राइस एट वन रुपीज सो यू हैड हंड्रेड इन टू वन विच इज हंड्रेड ओके दिस इज योर बेस इफेक्ट दिस इज योर डिफाइंड बेस फॉर टू थाउजेंड इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व नाउ वॉट यू डू एवरी ईयर लेट से इन next year you produce 150 but you'll still multiply the 150 units with 1 rupee as a cost okay and then your output becomes 150 and so on and so forth this analysis of a uh, way of doing the gdp analysis is called the real gdp isme the prices are defined as of the base year so if fy 12 mein jo prices the un commodities ke उन्हीं प्राइसेस पे आज की आउटपुट कैलकुलेट होती है इसीलिए इसे रियल जीडीपी कहते हैं क्योंकि ये वॉल्यूम इफेक्ट ऑफ द इकोनॉमी दिखाती है जो नॉमिनल जीडीपी होती है उसमें प्राइसेस एज ऑफ टुडे लिए जाते हैं तो इंस्टेड ऑफ डूइंग यू नो अगर लेट से वही आउटपुट आज 200 हंड्रेड है इंस्टेड ऑफ डूइंग टू हंड्रेड इंटू वन वी विल डू टू हंड्रेड इंटू टू डेज प्राइस टू लेट से प्राइजेस है टू वन पॉइंट फाइव सो वील डू टू हंड्रेड इंटू वन पॉइंट फाइव इन दिस केस रियल जी डी पी विल बी टू हंड्रेड एंड नॉमिनल जी डी पी विल बी टू हंड्रेड इंटू वन पॉइंट फाइव विच विल बी थ्री हंड्रेड एंड द डिफरेंस ऑफ दिस हंड्रेड यूनिट बिटवीन द टू इज बिकॉज ऑफ द चेंज इन प्राइसेस सो नॉमिनल जी डी पी अकाउंट फॉर चेंज इन वॉल्यूम एज वेल एज दाइसेस रियल जी डी पी अकाउंट फॉर चेंज इन Uh, volume alone in economic terms uh, there is a other way of doing it that nominal gdp is real gdp plus the gdp deflator gdp deflator kya hai it's a very simple concept jo uh, inflation ko account karti hai so agar aap uh, nominal gdp se gdp deflator hata dete hain to aapke paas real gdp aati hai uh, gdp deflator economy wide uh, you know इन्फ्लेशन या डिफ्लेशन या वैल्यूज दिखाती है यूजली हम एक इन्फ्लेशनरी रजीम में ही रहते हैं बाय एक्सपीरियंस ये जो जी डी पी डिफ्लेटर होता है ये टू थर्ड ऑफ डब्ल्यू पी आई होता है और वन थर्ड ऑफ सी पी आई होता है मतलब टू थर्ड ऑफ प्रोड्यूसर प्राइसेज होता है और वन थर्ड ऑफ रिटेल प्राइसेज होता है बिकॉज जी डी पी का बास्केट ही ऐसे डिफाइंड है कि प्रोड्यूसर कॉम्पोनेंट इज बिगर दैन द रिटेल कॉम्पोनेंट अलोन सो GDP deflator is very important to understand uh, the the overall scenario uh, of inflation in the economy. And you know, post COVID, we've seen like twenty percent, twenty two percent kind of a nominal GDP growth. That is because inflation alone was trending upwards of ten percent. So understanding the real GDP and nominal GDP is very important. Uh, in fact, India's real GDP trends. or is expected to trend around trend around 6% uh nominal gdp because as the target is at 4% is expected to trend around 10% so where we are compared to this baseline is what that matters um finally i think i would like to cover the effect or the usefulness of a concept like gdp number one mostly in all macro economic analysis we take data as a percentage of gdp so your fiscal deficit at 5.9 is 5.9 percentage of gdp your cad at 2 and a half is 2 and a half as a percentage of gdp and so on and so forth so uh, the size of the economy as it know as we know it when we do the percentage or when the denominator is that it helps to make a relative comparison okay 
uh, when we talk about external debt, we talk as a percentage of GDP. When we talk about currency in circulation, again, as a percentage of GDP. So if I want to compare India, which is in USD terms, about a three trillion economy to uh, US or China, which are like seven times of uh, this number, I cannot do it on absolute basis. I have relative basis pe hi karna padega, or relative basis pe karne ke liye, main usse as a percentage of GDP uh, read karna start karti hu. So starting of the year mein jab budget banta hai, to ek nominal GDP ke numbers ki projection aati hai. Agar nominal GDP actually usse zyada hui, to fiscal deficit for the same borrowing kam ho jayegi. Kyun? Kyunki nominal GDP is in the denominator here. Agar usse kam hui, to for the same numerator, the number will start to look bigger. Okay, so uh, all headline numbers are studied as percentage of GDP and therefore this is very important to make sense of the headline. Uh, in terms of, secondly, in terms of, you know, asset classes, uh, let's say for equity, higher growth is obviously considered good. But again, it's a matter of what was expected, what is the consensus versus what the real number is, which sectors have done well, which part of the economy has done well. And uh, also, too much growth uh, can lead to overheating of the economy, can ask, uh, you know, NPC to actually cut, uh, you know, hinder the interest rates in the economy and increase it rather. And therefore, it's, it's about the fine balance. But Overall, growth is good for equity markets. Uh, secondly, in terms of bond markets, uh, higher growth environment is not very rewarding. So debt as an instrument tends to do better, especially on the longer duration when they, we are in a crisis kind of a scenario. But, uh, you know, there, there, there have been times when, uh, you know, higher growth, if it comes with low inflation, etc., has attracted FIIs to come in India, et cetera. But overall, high growth is not uh, positive for the debt market, uh, simply because high growth means the economy will overheat, which means inflation will also grow higher, which means RBI will cut, come in to increase the interest rates and that will pass on to the higher end in the g uh, In terms of commodities, Again, high global growth leads to appreciation in commodity prices. It signifies that there is more demand and therefore there'll be more demand for raw materials, commodities, et cetera. And therefore the prices goes up, uh, especially in a, uh, you know, economies like China, et cetera, which are a very big consumer of commodities. This number matters a lot more. Um, gold, on the other hand, is considered to do better when growth is actually slowing down because it's a risk of asset. Uh, and therefore, you know, uh, a falling growth environment theoretically benefits uh, gold as, a, as an asset class. In terms of currency, again, a country whose growth is doing better should see currency appreciation. But we live in a relative world. So what matters is, you know, currency, how the growth is vis-a-vis -vis the other economy and how their currency is doing, etc. So obviously it's it, it's not a point to point effect. It's a multi uh, you know variable regression model. There are more than one variables involved. But what we just discussed are, is the theoretically direct implications. In this video, we covered ways to calculate uh, you know GDP, the base effect, the difference between the real and nominal GDP, uh, the GDP deflator, and the the real life use cases of GDP. So this is all for the GDP topic today. I hope you found this useful. And if there are any questions, please ask them in the comments and we will revert back to them. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.